to hear their voice through a microphone. So we appreciate you for making the time. Anyone who's willing to take you know, time away from free pinball to come sit and talk about toppers, you're our people. We love you. We appreciate you. We're going to try to make this entertaining. We want this to be an, you know, interactive. I counted no less than three people sleeping in the last session. Let's try, to, let's try to just make it a little bit better if we can. Again, I'm Alec. This is Rob. We are partners and founders of the Electric Playground, and we make toppers. You're here to learn about toppers. I don't know why, but you're here to learn about toppers, and we're going to tell you a little bit about what we do. And then we're going to give you the background of how we think about toppers, and I want you to keep that context in mind because what we're going to be asking for throughout this is for actual live engagement where we're going to brainstorm future projects that we could be working on. And we want to hear what you guys think, what's interesting to you. If, if these titles are not interesting to you, we want to know what you think we should be building for and what you think is possible. So with that being said, we're in Chicago. It's a pinball expo. Thanks for having us. This is where you go to vote, all right? Scan the QR code. We have five games uploaded. These are games that we've been thinking through. We have some thoughts to share, but we want this, again, to be an interactive brainstorm session. So we have some things to talk about, but by all means, we're hoping to hear about uh, what you want as well. If the, if the five games listed are not of interest to you, there's a, there's a write-in category. Put in what you think we should be thinking about, and we'll talk about those as well. Top votes are going to be, the, we're going to go through two toppers. The top two will be the ones that we, we, we brainstorm together. If we have more time, maybe we can make it three. So how we got here, a little background about uh, the, who, how we started this crazy business. This is Robin's basement. Every good company has a basement origin story. We are no different. The topper that you're seeing here was a pet project that w Robin started because, like many people, in COVID, you're bored, you had time on your hands, and you were waiting for Stern to put out their Godzilla topper. We got sick of waiting. Robin had a good idea. It actually turned out pretty cool. I said, maybe that's a business idea. And here we are. This is, uh, our, this is actually how we got into the hobby. This is our stomping grounds, the Silver Ballroom in St. Louis, Missouri. It's one of the greatest pinball bars and punk bars that you could ever go to. It is obviously like pinball. It attracts an eclectic crowd. Uh, there's, every time you win a trophy, you have to take the ceremonial picture in the toilet. Uh, this is, uh, so, a little bit more, like, again, we never thought toppers as a business made sense. It was, like everybody else, we kind of saw what was out there. We didn't really understand toppers. I even said, I want, like, who are the people buying these things? Like, what, why are people paying $1,300 to have some of, this, some of these things that mount their games? And then when you see all the other op options out there, we just thought there's a, um, there could be opportunity to do something better, if you will. That led us to where we are here today. Um, this is, again, the very first Godzilla topper that, uh, that Robin designed. Give you just a little bit more context. You can kind of see it in some of our friends' collections. These were actually very popular, but we learned very quickly about something called IP infringement, and a cease and desist letter will really you know, put the fear in God uh, into you pretty quickly. So learning, learning's all around. That led us to where we are today. If you haven't seen the Twilight Zone topper, please come by our booth. We would love to talk to you about it. Um, the background and origin story of Twilight, I'm a huge fan of this game. It's by far and away like everybody else. They have that, like, this is the game that's never going to leave my collection. I love it. I bought it. I sold it. I missed it. I bought it again. And ultimately, when we, when we had the, the feedback of the original Godzilla, let's call it that, Twilight Zone made nothing but the most sense, and we're going to get into why and how that factors into our design process later, but this is where things have evolved to. So we started with Godzilla, or it's Twilight rather, now we're getting into the world of Godzilla. Again, stop by the booth. We would love to give you the full tour of how all this works and the evolution of the company. I think it's crazy to think of how fast we've grown in terms of technology and what's capable from our little team here in St. Louis. Um, within that short amount of time, but we can get into that if and when you, sh you come by the booth. So, you want to hand off the booth? Oh, here, yeah. 
So um, we we did start in our garage. Uh, this is our shop that we have. So we've got a team of four that helps build these with us. Um, each topper takes anywhere from eight to 12 hours to build. So there's a lot to it. There's thousands of parts involved. It's been a learning experience for us. We're certainly not interested in making pinball machines. Um, but uh, we've got some great equipment. We've got a great team. Uh, we've got plans for a couple more toppers next year. So definitely you know, moving along. Um, as Alec mentioned, we've really evolved from the tech perspective. So that original Twilight Zone topper connects to four uh, basically lights or motors in the game. Uh, with the Twilight Zone topper, or I'm sorry, with the Godzilla topper, it's got 14 optical inputs. So we're actually registering 14 different switches on the game. We're doing a lot with the light show. It's got over 200 addressable RGB uh, lights in it. Um, so really, really trying to build a platform that we can do a lot more with and really bring interactivity um, into what we're building. Um, we're building with 3D models now. So you guys are probably seeing a lot of this from Jersey Jack lately, showing some of this stuff. We're doing the same thing. So from a prototyping perspective, you know, we can know down to the millimeter exactly where things are going to go. You cut it out, you, you put it together, and it, it just goes a lot faster. So uh, nothing with AI, of course, yet, but um, a lot going on with uh, the tech and the build process for us. Um, so last year, we debuted uh, Twilight Zone at TPF. Uh, this is our first expo uh, for both Alec and I. Uh, this is a shot from TPF. Again, would love you guys to come by the booth. This is really about, as you guys can kind of realize, it's about community. So like working on your machines is about community. Building these things is about community. So we're very focused on, you know. Real quick, do you have, anyone know who that other guy is, though? He, he was supposed to be here, and he's, uh, he's you know, happens to be uh, not here. But if you don't know Davey and Stumbler and all his mods and Godzilla, that, no, no? Yeah. All right, there's a few people. Did he make the mods that are in your pinball machine? No. 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 <laughs> himself, <laughs> no, I mean, we, Well, he was asking if any of the stuff in our toppers are made by him, and they're not. Yeah. But in the game itself, you've got the high-tension power line. No, that's not us. That's T. Diddy. <coughs> yeah. So. That's good stuff, too. <laughs> we, we're above the game. They're yeah, inside yeah. the game. Yeah. yeah. I was wondering if you did both. That's no. Yeah. yeah. We've, done a, we've done a couple small things, but mainly doing toppers, yeah, at the moment. Um, the, uh, the, the actual the Godzilla toppers evolved a little bit when we first debuted it. Uh, four or five months ago, the design uh, had some things that we wanted to improve. Um, so you can kind of see how some of our process gets into like taking community feedback. And a, a big part of this was kind of how it kind of tapered off on the side. So you're kind of seeing how, how that evolves uh, throughout our process. Um, better and different, we listen. And we try. We, had to, we try to incorporate other people's feedback. So I think that slide actually was important. It shows a lot of good stuff. But getting into the design philosophy and things that, uh, how we kind of think about toppers, we, it's a question like, how did you come up with this idea, right? So every time we think about a project, it starts here in the idea, all right, what's the form of this topper? What is it going to, in turn, is it going to be influencing the theme of the game? Or is it going to be more game and is actually more inspired by the gameplay? And then the function, how does, I, how does it actually come to life? Like, what are those wow moments of the topper? Anything that we touch, we want it, the spectators to have a moment to enjoy as well, right? We want it to look as good on top of that game, but it needs to have a, that, that, whatever that sparkle is, whatever you want to, want to call it. And then everything is tied together, obviously, with the interactivity of the topper. How do we actually utilize the technology that's in the game to bring these things to life? If it doesn't exist, how in the world are we going to make it exist? And that's, a, that's more probably the, where we're going to get into with Godzilla. So again, we being a small business, being we have families, it's two guys right, that started in a garage, we can't afford a lawsuit. We knew that pretty quick. You look at everything that's out there, you see things that people are just blatantly you know, taking IP infringement on and they're just making things for the sake of making them. We can't afford that. We want to be in this for the long haul. We want to build a business that we can actually build in and continue beyond just a, a couple years, right? So we cannot afford uh, any type of litigation. So we actually work with the trademark attorney with the design of, of Twilight Zone to make sure we were, everything we were doing was, was above board. So how this all kind of comes to life. Again, form to us, these are kind of the, 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 the more clear definitions of what this means. So again, when we're looking at the game or, or thinking about what a topper could be, the first thing you're going to look at is the game. Is can we make something that's going to actually be IP friendly for the theme 
Or are we going to design a topper that's going to be more about the gameplay and enhancing that experience for the player? So that's really what, what form means to us. The functionality, again, how does this kind of like, how, what is the experience going to be? Is it, is it the lighting design? Is it for Godzilla, undoubtedly, the light programming and the experience you get from the light show is, to me, one of the greatest parts about that game. The, how it actually plays and complements the gameplay, if you are into that game and you know how to, how to move through the missions, the topper will actually provide you wayfinding through the game, which is for us, it's, it hasn't been done in toppers. We think that's important. We think it needs to complement the, the gameplay just as much as anything else. And then also what that interactivity is. Like what is the mechanical movements and, and Twilight Zone, obviously the wow moment of the ball, the gumball, like actually moving around the, the habit trail. That was something that was really impressive to a lot of people. But it also pr communicates the progress through the game in the sense when the multi balls lit, the fl the door is going to be flashing. It's going to tell you something is going to happen if you hit that. So when you're playing pinball, you're focused down here. Sometimes having that just another sen you know, something feeding into the senses can help you from a player's perspective. We want to leverage that. At the end of the day, we're players ourselves. Uh, he's better than I am, undoubtedly, but. He knows, he knows deep rule sets, and he knows how to design for, uh, to make, I guess, the games a little bit more uh, accessible in that way. So, um, you know, the, the, the form and the function, like with, with Twilight Zone, it was really about the form in terms of like telling the story of Twilight Zone. With Godzilla, it was about that fun the, the, the functionality, and, and both of those tie into the interactivity. So with this one, I don't know how well you guys know Godzilla, but it's, it's really the game is about creating destruction. You are Godzilla. You're trying to, trying to create destruction in this game, and your score is reflective of that. And a key part of it is activating these monster monitor modes and moving through the city. So when we designed this, you know, we really wanted to help communicate that to you, communicate the progress, and ultimately celebrate, you know, that throughout it. And the way you do that, of course, is having a lot of information uh, about what the progress of the game is without actually tying into, you know, the CPU of the game, which we don't have access to do that. So from a tech perspective, this module we built is, uh, there's basically a node board that sits underneath the play field. Um, it's actually uh, connected to this device that has uh, eight optical sensors, so it's kind of like a night light, but the reverse of that, so light turns this thing on. And that board there on the left, which sits under the play field, communicates through a standard Ethernet cable to the board that's on the back of the topper. So on the back of the topper, you've got various things hooked up. We're telling, telling the topper that things are happening. And what's really cool about this is it's expandable. So not only for our mods, uh, but also mods that others are building. So we're building this platform in a way that you can really make it yours. Like if you're very much into like 3D models of buildings, um, we were working with a mod maker to make that. If you want to just add your own lighting effects, you can do that. So basically there's a, a series of posts on the front of the topper that you can put stuff in. You can remove the buildings. Uh, we've actually got four modeled buildings from Sleel, another mod maker in the Godzilla community uh, that you can come check out. And then you can also light those up. So there's, mo there's ports on the back to light those things up. If you want to do something with your undercab lighting through that, you can. There's a lot of expansion uh, ability for that. Um, so, so that's kind of our process, if you will, and I know we kind of went through that pretty quickly, but we're hoping to work with you to kind of talk through some ideas uh, that you might have, because really, you know, we want to build toppers that you guys want for the games that you want. Um, so I hope a few of you voted. I'm going to pull up, you know, the results uh, real quickly. Um, so give me a second on that, and I'll let Alec fill some time. Fill some time? <laughs> talk amongst yourselves? Did anyone do the write-in? I'm just curious. Was anyone actually, did anyone even vote? Well done, Chris. Yeah, an army of one. We'll probably get, yeah. Yeah, question? Question in the audience? Please. So, so the, the extra ports was on Godzilla, not Twilight Zone. 
Yeah, and again, it's kind of a testament to the evolution of the company. The, the Twilight Zone is very rudimentary. It just uses T-taps to tap into your existing wiring, which tells the topper to do what it does. We've completely programmed Godzilla, right? So we can, we can make that thing do whatever we want. Twilight Zone just does what it does. Yeah. Uh-oh. Who's the winner? 30.8. Let's give it uh, two more minutes, and we'll uh, talk about the top one. All right, two more minutes. One, any other questions? Chris, this is your moment. You asked. I'll answer. Uh, I'm unable to use the cannon to do the jump, but I would like to uh, put my vote in for Indiana Jones. All right. Yeah, you can go to tepinball.com slash vote if you can't hit that QR code. Wow. Well. Well. Uh, well, okay. <laughs> so, so the, the pinball companies have the right to, to use the license, right? And of course it's in their interest to enforce that license while it's within the framework of that time period, which is typically three years. So, you know, we're, we care about both companies interest in intellectual property at that point for us, you know, art and, and expressing things is about being inspired and, and it, we believe that we have the right to you know use the things we're using because we're inspired and we're using common objects and we're displaying that so that's not to say we wouldn't like to acquire licenses at some point with our toppers so we can really give you know those characters so a lot of the decisions we're making is around like how much character ip there is in the topper and, and so we would never do Star Wars because like it's about celebrating the characters or you can make that argument Toy Story for example you know that it, that's one of the more stronger things to defend from an intellectual property perspective so and in this Godzilla topper you see the suggestion of Godzilla but it's a monster with spikes you know um, so and we can of course change things too if we need to you know if we run into issues yep So with the Godzilla, we're actually building an add-on, which is going to be a 3D molded console with actually digital displays in it. Um, so that'll be something that's coming next year. Everything we're building with Godzilla is going to be modular in the sense of you can add, you know, these things onto it over time. Sure. Yeah, so, so there are mod makers that are tapping into the serial bus, uh, and, and we do have some concerns about the, the companies being able to brick that by changing the encryption on that. So for us, we're using, in the case of Godzilla, there's 14 optical light sensors that when they sense the light is on, but we're able to use them in conjunction with each other. So for example, with the four monster monitors, when they're all four on, we can tell the topper to do this rainbow display. So you get this very high visual impact of like, okay, now it's time to change, change cities because you've got all four monster monitors lit. Uh, so th a lot of them, a lot of them uh, are semi-contained. Um, there's also the sensors are very tiny and can be angled a certain way, but the places that we're using, there's a couple cases where we were using a T-tap to light up another light and we're sensing that light and it's behind a uh, heat shrink. So we're not actually in any way uh, using the power of the machine other than the light, a single light that then we're sensing that. So in the case of the GI, we have to do that in a couple of cases. So, all right, so we've got uh, 20 votes in, and I think is it Ghostbusters? Okay, so um, we've got a, a great idea, we think, for Ghostbusters. We'd love to share that with you guys, you know, if we don't get a lot of responses. But I'm, I'd, I'd love to hear from anyone that did vote for Ghostbusters or otherwise, if you've got any ideas that you'd like to see in, in the Ghostbusters topper. With, with the caveat of, of, of remembering, we can't have like Bakeman on top of the topper <laughs> or any of the, you know, the, the license. So with that being said, is there any ideas that you guys thought of that you wanted to maybe chat about? No? Give them a sec. Sir? Yes. Um, I thought about just the actual car. The, the car? Yeah. Yep. Yep, so, so the, the topper that was from the manufacturer, which is you can't acquire anymore, was the light bar. Is there a specific variant on that? Or are you talking about the actual car? Yeah. 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 With like the headlights or like the front, maybe the grill of the, of the car? Like, you know, whatever. I was thinking about the yeah. we, we One of our favorite ideas, uh, so we have some signs in our booth 
one of the signs we came up with is uh, you're going to wish you had a taller ceiling because everyone comes by our booth and just, I would love to have it, but I only have like a, you know, seven foot ceiling. I don't know a car is going to fit on top of the game. I don't know how we're going to make well, that. Sure. If, it's, if it goes a long way. Oh, so you're going to go oh, like the length of the car. Yeah, yeah. Oh, mm, maybe. Yeah, I mean, I, I love that idea. I look at the car as a character, and it's very, very much in that intellectual property zone that I think that we probably would want to avoid tackling, um, both from a legal perspective and, you know, just the, the other, there's, I would say with the light bar, too, like, it's, it's pretty close to what's out there. Uh, but I, I think it sounds really cool. Um, other, Davey, welcome. We talked about you earlier. Yeah, under the bus. No one knew who you were. <laughs> No, that's not true. That's not true. Other ideas for Ghostbusters. Crossing the streams. Yeah, so. Yep. Right. Yeah. The the streams is a is a great one. Um, there are there are a couple cool toppers that I don't think quite get there to really take advantage of that. But, you know, the four Ghostbusters, there's a, there's a topper out there for Ghostbusters with the, with the guys with the backs, and they've got something going up. Uh, but thinking about the form and the function, but the interactivity, right? Like, that, that is a criteria for our toppers, that the interactivity has got to be there. Um, so I think there's probably some really cool stuff there. And we're doing a lot with motors and servos to what we can do. We actually, uh, we went through a spell where we found this little Tesla coil and it, it actually, you can, you can surround the Tesla coil. It's like a, a $50 device on Amazon with a, a, a glass tube, and they shoot up, and they're purple, and they were perfect. But it's a lot of energy in a small location. <laughs> so we kind of decided other legal reasons very to maybe. Loud. Very loud, very loud, very loud. But the idea of the, of, the, of the beams, undoubtedly, there's something cool there for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Totally, totally. Other Ghostbusters ideas. Tell them yours, all right? Just drop it down. Okay. What? Give them yours. Oh, okay. So, uh, so Chris in the Cardinals hat back there, we are from St. Louis. <laughs> he, are you voting? What are you doing? Um, <laughs> he let me borrow his Ghostbusters for a month, which was awesome. Um, and I got to really get a feel for it. Is it do anybody here own Ghostbusters? We've got lots of Ghostbusters fans. So, uh, I really love that game. I, I had never really played that much, but one of the cool things is you've got this in the center. Um, so we got some pictures of Ghostbusters. Let's let's go back to the script. Um, so in the center area, uh, up above the flippers, you've got this ghost counter, which is you trapping ghosts. So it's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, up to 100. And you, there's some key things there. You're, you're capturing. Uh, an extra ball, I think, at 50. You're activating a mode at 100. And, and there's ghosts all over the play field. So one of the things that's lacking in this game is a focus on the storage facility. So that's the thing that was in their basement with the big red container. And they stick it in there, and eventually it explodes. Uh, and there is a storage facility multi-ball. So the idea here is to like really focus on the storage container, which we can come up with a version of that that you know we will feel confident in displaying. It's not really a, a character. And uh, the idea is to display with a digital display, kind of old school, like, you know, red on black, like that count, right? So you're actually kind of like capturing that number of ghosts you're, you're achieving up there. And it's, it's a really important thing because and you kind of lose sight of it sometimes. So if, if you're reflecting on it up and you're like, oh, I'm at 50, I'm at 70, I'm at 90, like 100. And, and then when you activate the storage facility multi-ball, the entire play field goes red and a bunch of lights. So we're thinking about putting like real domed old school lights up there that flash when that goes. So that's, that's something that, you know, gets us excited is like how do we communicate something but also hit something that's kind of lacking in the game right now as far as a focus. And the wow moment, like the thing I think that tied it together, a video screen that the more ghosts you capture, the, the more ghosts in the animation start showing up. And they're all flying around inside you know, the, the, the reactor or whatever you call it, the storage unit. So the more ghosts that you're capturing, the more it gets packed until it just explodes, right? And that's, that's kind of that big wow moment. See, she likes it. I, you know, I, I, I try to conveniently forget the really hard stuff. <laughs> no, but yeah, that, I, I forgot about that. So like have a little like window to look into it and the ghosts are kind of circling in there and then whenever it does explode, like maybe do some lights around it. Um, 
I love to have a trap, you know, the trap in there too, right? Because that's the whole point, right? It's the whole scene where they're sliding it in there. I was like, you can, we could make that. Does uh, any, yes, sir. It's possible. So that uses a technology called machine learning. So you basically train the light sensor to know what these colors are. You know, you kind of do it. Under, and and that, is, that is very much possible. It would require a different kind of sensor than we have. But we do have that board with all those outputs and inputs. So it could be added for sure. Uh, that's a great idea. I mean, that frankly could be added to Godzilla if there was a, a use case in Godzilla for something like that, for sure. Other Ghostbusters ideas? Sorry. Yes. Yeah, yeah, so uh, I'll, I'll bring up one of the ideas we have. So so for Lord of the Rings, um, we really want to do something uh, that celebrates a key moment in that game where it's, you're getting jackpot one, jackpot two, jackpot three. It's actually on this timer where you have to get them in sequence, and it can build up to like five or six. And it's, it's a huge opportunity to celebrate a moment, and then that's combined with a key element of that intellectual property that we think we can work with, which is the eye. So how do we get that eye up there in a video display? Um, how do we celebrate these jackpots? And that jackpot thing is actually something we can't detect with the tech that I've been showing you. Like, we can't know that the system is on jackpot three or four. Well, Pinsound has developed this technology that allows you to basically replace sound effects and voiceovers. So uh, Alec has a Terminator 2, and there's not a lot of or maybe not even any Arnold audio in there. Um, in the original? Yeah, so he's got, he's got this pin sound system that replaces all the audio, and like Arnold's like yelling at you the whole game. It's pretty cool. And the way they're doing that is they're actually monitoring the serial bus on these older like Sam and Spike One systems, uh, and they're able to basically replace the audio. Well, in that case, we could use a system like pin sound to basically display those jackpots on that video display up top. So. To give you the idea a little bit better, it's a larger display. It's generally focused on the eyeball, but then it's also celebrating, you know, maybe with eyeball effects like those jackpots. And the eyeball follows the ball, right? That too, it yes. The hard part, the hard part I mentioned. Always searching. Other Ghostbusters. Otherwise, we could really move on to any of these if you guys have key ideas. It looks like our second... Biggest was Adams, which, so Adams is an interesting one. You guys, should we move on? So Adams, all the machines came with a topper. Is that a correct statement? Yeah. Many of those toppers are broke, but not enough to say, like, hey, we got to have another topper. But, you know, it's such a popular machine. There's so many, which is important to us from a business. It's like the volume needs to be there. I think it's, what, 20,000? Rich, correct me, do you know? Uh, Adams? 21,000. So very popular machine. Yep. It predated, it predated uh, Twilight Zone, right? Yes. Yep. Um, so you've got a topper that people generally like. I like it. But, you know, there's so much interactivity in that game. That game is relatively straightforward from a rule set. Like, it would be really cool to kind of highlight some certain things. So we've got some ideas on that one. I, before we share it, maybe we can get some ideas from the field. You guys have anything? Oh, yeah. Pull up the game. All right. Anybody like to share? Adams. Come on, Davey. You promised you were going to talk. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> And would you would you imagine the design still being relatively the same? It's just kind of like light is is building and oh, fair enough. 
Well, I mean, honestly, one of the greatest ideas, if I say greatest, I you know, just can't think of a better word. It's, I love this topper. This is, the, and this is the very first game I've owned, right? Like, this is a soft spot for me. I don't really want to replace it. So it's just an extension of the back glass, you know. It's the top of the mansion, right? And it's the clouds and it's uh, the steeples and and the windows up top. But it's also the the reflection of the of the the main mansion in the game and the in the play field. Well, it lights during you know the clouds light up in the multi ball. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Usually it's too d yellow to, for me to see. That. Yellowed or smoky, like it, we it, in the ballroom, it used to be a smoking bar, and their their topper was disgusting. But I I still love this design. But it doesn't mean we couldn't make it more in, like interactive, more 3D. If you just recreated the clouds, like I don't know if anyone saw like the Funhouse topper that they have down. What's the booth by us? Do you know what the name uh, is? Well, it, they're vacuum form clouds, right? Like, and they look exceptionally, and they look beautiful when the lights are back behind them. There's no doubt you could create a cooler cloudscape than just that clear plastic. And then you could make the 3D elements of, of the mansion easily. But to your point, how do you make it in an experience? How do you create that, that, that crescendo of light building through those clouds? That's an interesting problem. The storm, you know, taking effect on top of your game could be a really cool idea and still honor the tradition of what is, uh, like, this is the granddaddy, right? Like, so this one's really tough for us to think about doing because you kind of don't want to mess with what's almost, like, perfect in a weird way. That's what we said. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the, the, the power. Yeah. Whenever the power grabs the ball, it's like lightning, you know, yeah, bouncing back and forth maybe between the two clouds or something. Yeah. I think it would be a part of, I think, what we're tapping here is it needs to do more than just the multi-ball sequence, right? It should be a, a bigger part of the game. It, I, I'm curious, does anybody know what the resale value is on these toppers? Because, I mean, there's a lot of people that don't have them. And has anyone ever tried to buy one or sell one? They're remaking that? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think I think this one is going to have to be a home run to work, right? Like, with, uh, with, with Twilight Zone, there wasn't a lot of options. That was a key, you know, choice for us. With this one, I, one of the ideas we had was, like, creating effectively, like, a cuckoo clock style house on the top where like windows and doors open up which would be a home run right but then of course you got the building on the back glass already so now you got another whole building on top of it so there's there's some interesting challenges with this one for sure um in that sense uh other ideas yeah very interesting yeah <laughs> Wait. We, we, we said we weren't going to cuss, and that got him there real quick. Sometimes you just need someone to present All right, so we, we, let's, let's just for fun come to a screeching halt on that one. On. Unless we got another idea. Yeah, go ahead, Rich. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's a key thing in the middle, but it's not really that well done as far as community games. That would be really cool for sure. Maybe we could bring that Tesla coil to life and actually have the lightning coming out. Do, does anyone here have a Adams without a topper? No, everyone's got the. All right, it's good to know. All right. Um, yeah, so we, we kind of added some of these because, you know, we wanted to kind of get a mix of different manufacturers. Ooh, Flash Gordon could pop it up there. That's a cool one. Um, does anybody have ideas on any of these that are on the board that they want to share? Someone came by the booth earlier and wanted to talk about Indiana Jones. They're, they're, are they not in this crowd? I told them about the panel, damn it. No. Yeah, that's that's it. There's a lot of there's a lot of good toppers for Indy, right? Um, I I at one point said. 
I was never going to do another ball because, like, it's been really hard to make that ball go on Twilight Zone. It's been a lot of work. But I think, you know, that's something to where that that kinesthetic level. So with Indy, you know, one thing that comes up a lot is, like, the ball rolling down the hill, right? And, like, imagine if that was on the topper. I mean, I think there could be a case for someone who sat on the fence for these great toppers. It's like, it's time to pull the trigger, right? Um, and, of course, you know, if you love this topper, resale. So that's one idea. I mean, I, I think we've kind of struggled with, like, really key indie ideas. Let's pull it up. Let's get into indie. I want to I hear people's thoughts on indie. So it was only 10% of the vote, so I doubt there's many, many hands going to raise. But did anyone have any ideas for indie that they'd be willing to share? Sir? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, those would be certainly doable. Um, I've thought about it just even as simple as just having the stones with the with the one, two, three stripes, you know, just indicating that. But like, I don't. It just seems so obvious, and and obvious isn't the goal, right? To, when I think about Indiana Jones and this title in particular, it's all the movies. This is the best movies, anyway. It's all three of the good ones, and. You want to bring in elements of all of those to life in some shape, way, or form. And, and it keeps coming into my head. It's almost like an Indiana Jones obstacle course in a weird way, right? Like the boulder has got to be a part of it. It's, you know, as much as it's going to make his life a living hell, we got to figure it out. So the boulder chasing something around, the bridge scene, you know, with the, 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 the swinging uh, rope bridge is obviously a piece of it. The mine shaft scene, 100%, right? I, th maybe I'm alone in this, but I still also have this idea of, of a monkey where its head pops off. You got the monkey brain scene. I just love that scene. That's just the, the dinner sequence to me is like one of my favorite parts of that stupid movie. Um, the snake belly opening up and all the baby snakes coming out. Like that, we're not going to do that. I hate snakes, but yeah. But there's like there's so much fun stuff in that. The Grail, the 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 Holy Grail, and the third one, the invisible walkway. I don't know how you bring half of this stuff to life, but. It, this one to me seems like it needs to be a, an amalgamy of, of all the movies, and I think that's the way it makes the most sense. Going back to the earlier part of the present, this is like one of those instances where it's about the theme more than I think it's the game in, a, in, a, in an idea for the topper. It's more a celebration of the theme of Indiana Jones before the fourth and that fifth movie came out. Uh, I, d I didn't even watch the fifth one, so maybe it's good, but I don't know. All right, Indy, we're, we're, we're super curious about this one, so I'd love to hear any other thoughts you guys have. Yeah, meaning, yeah. Meaning the, not the ones that already exist, the arc, none of, you're not talking. Yeah. Yeah. There is certainly a couple of Good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think this one actually lends itself nicely to what we do from an, you know, the IP standpoint. There's so many iconic things in it that don't require the character, right? So I think this is actually something that would be in our wheelhouse, yet it's one of those ones where we have so many ideas for it. I don't know that we come across like what, what's the right one, where other ones where it's very clear what we want to do. So Lord of the Rings is a great example of that. So one thing to keep in mind to, you know, just as you guys watch our progress and have opinions on what we decide to do, um, roughly, roughly 15%, maybe 10%, uh, depending on the batch of our Twilight Zone topper are going to, to people who don't own the Twilight Zone pinball machine. Um, so a lot of them, they have this nostalgia of a game they no longer have. A lot of them just aren't going to pull the trigger on it, but love what it does. And we actually have built in, built in switches uh, to, to allow you to, to operate that independently of the machine. So 
I don't know if this applies to the Indiana Jones, but just so you guys kind of know, like we're thinking about like what are the things that people would want for their bar to celebrate, you know, these games. Um, and in a lot of cases, you know, they may just be a fan of that theme and they may not even be into pinball and there could be a market for that type of thing. So that's something that's part of our process. Um, we've got about less than five minutes. Yep. Four. Let's, uh, well, someone put in Flash Gordon, right? Someone put in Flash Gordon. I want to hear what they were thinking. Not that they just in, I'm put it again. You had an idea for a topper. What is it? Who's, who's going to be the brave soul and admit that they put in Flash Gordon? Anyone? Bueller? Seriously, nobody. No what's, one's a, good. What's, a, what's a key element of the game? I have no idea. I've never played it. I was hoping that's why they got to speak up. Anybody tell us the key element of a Flash Gordon gameplay? I mean, I've seen some of these machines. These are often beautifully redone. Uh, so I think one thing we would love is to augment some of these older machines. Um, sometimes when we think about older machines, we think about what people would be willing to spend for those machines relative to the price of the machine, um, while still kind of maintaining that interactivity goal that we have. Uh, OK, well, take that back. Oh, this is, that's eBay prices. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, any any uh, thoughts uh, for the folks coming in? Uh, we're, we're talking about topper ideas. Uh, uh, we we build toppers, so we're brainstorming different ideas. Uh, so we're just kind of wrapping up. But good to see you here. Um, any other any other just general ideas anybody'd like to share? Were you late to the game, or did you just come in? <laughs> we didn't know the names of any of these. <laughs> Nice. So who are those people that you just said? Yeah. <laughs> nice. Nice. It sounds obscure enough to get around the IP part. No one cares about <laughs> that, that too much. Uh, all right. Wrap it up. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, again, uh, we have a booth. Uh, we're kind of... Uh, when you come in, we're a little bit on the right. We'd love for you to come by and just learn about some of the tech we're building. Uh, we'd love to have your feedback. Our, tw our Godzilla Topper, uh, our first batch for that is on Saturday at 12 o'clock. Um, so you can uh, pick that up uh, on our website. We're going to be selling that, we, again, 30. Uh, and then we've got a, a wait list for Twilight Zone, but we're, we're getting some out to the next batch probably in early uh, of, of 2024, so we can get that into your hands. None of our toppers are limited at this point, uh, so we can get it to you if you'd like it. Uh, anything? We're running a show special, 50 bucks off. Yeah, so if you'd like to get on the list, Chris wants in on that, um, we can get you on the list for $50 off. We've got actually just 10 units uh, reserved for this, and we've gone through a couple of them so far, but we can get you in before December 15th on this current batch if you guys want to pick it up. Uh, the retail on that is $16.29, so it's a, normally a $100 deposit for that, but it would be $50, and then the, the final amount's due when it's ready to ship. All right. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it.